Dungeons and Dragons has a purple Zorro, and I made him. This is Ground Affected, my name is your dad, and in this video I will be painting Purple Zorro from uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not 100% sure how to even say this guy's name, but I can tell you with confidence that it is not Zorro. The first thing you need to do if you ever want to paint yourself a purple Zorro is to give it a primer. The primer is an important layer. This is a layer that will stick to your models and help every other subsequent layers stick to that layer. If you fail at this point, then you have failed the entire model and you need to go back to square one. Now I'm going to paint the boots of Purple Zorro, and these boots are in fact brown. So I used brown color to give them a base coat. Also, as you may notice, it is Purple Zorro, so you can't have Purple Zorro without spraying a little bit of purple onto Zorro. And what you may notice though, is that I'm using the black almost as a shadow. I am spraying this purple, not 100% over everything, but I am spraying to leave some of the black in the shadows. I am then going to come back with some purple ink, which is way darker than the colour that I had picked originally, and I'm going to spray that into the shadows of Purple Zorro. I'm going to do my best to stop saying Purple Zorro because it's driving even me nuts. On the sides of his suit, there is a different material which needs a different texture or even different color to make it look like it's a different material. And in order to do that, I just sprayed a wash over the top of this. On his arms, he has these little ivory colored uh, bands. And in order to do that, I just painted them with deck tan and then I sprayed Reichlin flesh shade at them from a certain angle. Before I did that though, I dry brushed a little bit of a highlight of a brighter pink over the top of the purple on the different texture on his suit and then I prepared myself for doing a bazillion bit of gold trimming all over this entire model because as for any Dungeons and Dragons model it has to have gold trim and it has to have a, a lot of gold trim otherwise it's not a legally correct Dungeons and Dragons model I can't even say dragons gold trim drives me nuts genuinely uh, it looks good but it is really irritating to paint I then stuck the legs into the bottom part of his torso uh, without glue so to the guy who's getting this please make sure you don't uh, break that because I did not actually glue those in and they are just held in by uh, traction getting back onto that gold trimming I added some more gold trimming onto more parts of the model this is not in fact gold actually it is brass I think it's brass no it's bronze it's bronze from monument hobbies and it, it can trick your eye to thinking that it's gold but it's not actually gold I use Sargor Brown to paint the straps and the reason that I use this contrast paint is just because it covers really well and it doesn't require me having to thin it off or anything in order to paint it there is a little feather in the top of his hat and it's blue so I sprayed that blue and gave it a highlight on the base there is some sandy like texture and I was given a brief in order to match a very specific image so there was no particular reason why I chose these colors other than they looked like they were the colors in the image that I was given to sort of emulate in the center is a little bowl Thing for putting fruit perhaps I'm not really sure but I think that the owner of this model will probably keep the spare parts inside of this little hole there is some kind of vortex I don't know why there is a vortex don't even ask me I know nothing of the law of any Dungeons and Dragons let alone Purple Zorro who is actually probably one of the best Dungeons and Dragons characters but I would never know painting his skin I was told that he has a greyish skin tone, so I painted his skin with greys. I used neutral grey, and I also used a little bit of purples in the shadows uh, to make him not look like he was dead, because if you spray this all just a solid grey using white to highlight it, he's gonna look very uh, unsaturated and weird, uh, kinda like a black and grey photograph, uh, and that's not gonna be the thing that you're looking for.
Once I was satisfied with where I thought that the highlights were on the skin tones, I put them aside and allowed them to dry so that I can carry on doing a yet more gold trimming across the rest of the various parts on this model. Did I mention yet that I don't actually like doing gold trimming? I like how it looks, but I don't... whatever. I'm not going to tell you my feelings about gold trimming because it, it will just end up being a very angry video and we don't want that to happen. And for absolutely no reason at all, it was during this process that my friend George came over to the shop and decided we needed to build a super vape, which is basically a fog making machine, which is just a very extravagant looking vape, basically. It has a little pump in it that we have linked up to an 18650, and we 3D printed a little case, and we blew this fog all over the place. At one point, I decided to capture the fog, and then I kept the fog as a little pet inside of this model. But that is not really important. What is important, however, is that in order for me to have this studio, I need to have sponsors, and this video was sponsored by Primal Collectibles, and you need to check them out in the description, and I'm going to tell you why whilst I paint the stitching on the rest of this model. The latest package from the Tales of Kravos gives you some Barbarians, which are four distinct scales of these Barbarians in fact, and uh, you can get them only through the Frontiers campaign. This is available for the next five days by the way, also they asked me to let you know uh, that all the supporters of the Frontier campaign will get access to the files of the month of January through the tribe's trial, which means one month for free, and also the Christmas gift that was part of December bundle, along with three complete games and the pack of heroes from their Dragon Blade line. In total, you're going to get more than 90 miniatures for the price of the pledge of the Frontiers campaign, which is a pretty sweet deal. Also, I don't want to forget, but I also was told that I needed to tell you guys that their next campaign is going to be based on the Forgotten Realms, where they will be releasing every three months uh, around 20 hours of gameplay uh, for this complete adventure that they are doing. Go and show them some support. There will be a link for them in the description. Um, don't forget about them. These are really honestly amazing models. And I can tell you from printing every single one of them, their pre-supports uh, are very great as well. So if you're afraid of supporting them, they're already pre-supported for you. Don't have to worry. Just put it in a printer and print. Thank you to Primal Collectibles for sponsoring this video. And let's carry on painting. Now you may notice that I'm using a wash, this is just Reichland Flesh Shade and I'm using this because it's a thin paint that I can stick into the crevasses around the edge of the metallic bits so that they aren't just a solid edging because it just looks weird. I don't know why it looks weird but if you go back in there and just paint the edges with some kind of a wash this will trick the viewers eyes into thinking that there is a separation much better than just a solid line. On the swords, this was a tricky one, but the way I decided to do it was paint them silver first and then come back and paint the leather over the top of them. On the arms, there was a load of even smaller stitches that I had to just use a very small brush and carefully paint them in. He's holding a gem in his hand and realistically, this would have been better to paint if it was probably printed in a clear transparent resin. I'm not 100% sure, it's difficult. If you're a sculptor and you're sculpting things like this, make something like this separate because it would be so much easier to paint the hand and slide that little gem in there as opposed to trying to paint it. It's so hard to get in the gaps. Uh, but without moaning anymore, I'm gonna explain to you uh, that I'm gonna moan again because there is more gold trim on this R patch that goes over the dude's eyeball. And uh, I painted that very calmly and collectively. As this character is a male for his eyes, in fact, instead of doing solid black underneath, I did a black line at the top and a pinkish line at the bottom, and then I painted the usual white of the sclera in the eyes. This guy has red eyeballs, so he used a dark brown to do the base coat, and then a nice bright red over that, and obviously I put black for the friggin' pupil, and that's pretty much where I decided to call this model done. I just want to say a super special thank you to the Patreons because without them, honestly, the lights would not be able to blind my eyeballs. 
uh, when I'm making models, which is kind of a weird thing because you don't really see my face, which maybe brings me on to a, a little bit of an explanation. As you may tell, some of the videos have changed just slightly towards the last couple of videos, and that is because I'm testing things. I'm trying stuff out to see whether it works better or not better. Of course, if you have any information that you might know about how to make videos do better in the algorithm, leave that in the comments down below. And if you have any uh, horrible comments, leave that too, because we all know you're going to do that as well. This is a part of the video where I need to say to you that if you didn't like anything you saw in this video, uh, then you can kindly now pack your stuff, uh, please, uh, and... <laughs>